A common use of the force platform in sport and exercise is to record ground reaction forces during human locomotion. This section investigates the following common practical considerations during walking and running. Recording or regulating the speed of locomotion using timing gates. Targeting the force platform. The speed of locomotion and shod versus barefoot running. The speed of locomotion affects ground reaction forces, as will be shown later. Therefore, it is important when recording force that the speed of the participant is also recorded. Speed of locomotion can be determined using timing gates. These typically comprise a set of photoelectric cells and reflectors, as shown here, linked to a timing device. The participant breaks the first beam to start the timer and the second beam to stop it. Average speed can then be calculated by dividing the distance between the cells by the time. Photoelectric cells are usually set equidistant from the centre of the force plate, typically at hip height for running and head height for walking. When using timing gates to regulate speed, typically trials are accepted if the measured speed is within plus or minus 5% of the predetermined speed. Without adequate practice, participants instructed to run or walk over a force plate will often miss the plate altogether or only land part of their foot on it. Adjustments are also often made to running or walking style in an attempt to make contact with or target the force plate. The following sequences demonstrate both acceptable and unacceptable running trials. The first sequence shows an acceptable trial where the participant's running technique is not noticeably different from their normal running style, and their foot lands roughly in the centre of the force plate. The force time trace for this trial is also shown. The next sequences demonstrate unacceptable trials where the participant targets the force plate first by lengthening their stride or overstriding and then by shortening their stride or understriding in an attempt to land on the plate. The final sequence shows another unacceptable trial where only part of their foot lands on the force plate. In an acceptable trial, as shown here, the participant maintains their normal running technique and lands their foot approximately in the middle of the force plate. The resulting force time trace includes impact and active peaks, as are typically seen during heel-toe running. In this example, the participant lengthens their stride, or overstrides, on their approach to the force plate to ensure that the whole of their foot lands on it. The force time trace includes a much larger impact peak than that observed during the acceptable trial. Here, the participant shortens their stride or understrides on their approach to the force plate to ensure that the whole of their foot lands on it. The force time trace has a much reduced impact peak. Finally, the participant maintains their normal running technique, but only lands part of their foot on the force plate. Because of this, the force time trace no longer resembles that recorded from normal running. The following section investigates the effect of walking and running speed on the magnitude of ground reaction forces. Three trials were recorded, one with the participant walking, one during slow running, and a third during fast running. The vertical FZ force time trace recorded from walking shows two characteristic peaks that occur near the beginning and the end of the stance phase. The anterior posterior FY force time trace is negative during the first half of the stance phase and positive during the second half. Negative and positive FY forces are often termed braking and propulsive forces. Both slow and fast heel-toe running result in characteristic vertical impact and active peaks and anterior-posterior 
braking and propulsive peaks. To aid comparison of forces between walking and the two speeds of running, the x-axis on this graph displays the percentage of the stance phase rather than time in seconds. Comparison of vertical force time traces from walking and running shows that the two peaks that occur during walking are much lower than those recorded during running. This is partly due to the contralateral foot being in contact with the ground during part of the stance phase. The magnitude of impact and active peaks also increases from the slower to the faster speed of running. The magnitude of braking and propulsive peaks are similar between walking and slow running, but increase with running speed. Another factor that affects the magnitude of ground reaction forces as well as a runner's technique is footwear. To demonstrate this, a trial was recorded with the performer running barefoot as shown here. This graph compares the vertical or FZ component of ground reaction force from the barefoot trial with the previous trial in which the participant wore running shoes. Often when running barefoot, the impact peak occurs over a shorter period or is sharper and has a greater magnitude than during shod running, as shown in this example. The gradient of the vertical force curve before the impact peak is also often steeper in barefoot running than in shod running, as can be seen here. This gradient is commonly referred to as the loading rate. In this section, some of the key factors that can influence forces recorded during locomotion have been considered. Steps should be taken to habituate participants to prevent them targeting the force plate or failing to make contact with it. Speed of locomotion affects the magnitude of ground reaction forces and therefore should be recorded and or controlled. Different footwear also affects the magnitude of ground reaction forces due to both their material properties and the effect they may have on running mechanics. Therefore, footwear should be controlled when recording repeated trials.